Okay, so the talk, topic that we are starting this evening, and uh, that would be the topic for this week, basically, is uh, uh, starting to enter into the visual design of, uh, of our applications. Okay, so we remember that we went uh, step by step from the general uh, user requirements uh, to the tasks that we want to support uh, and to the guidelines uh, uh, and uh, to uh, to structure the website basically or the application uh, and now we are uh, going to the more practical uh, visual aspect uh, of the design okay um, so because ma many of the guidelines uh, will be implemented thanks uh, to a proper visual design uh, guidelines are made of components and this component need, needs to be position need to be color need to be size and so on and so what are the rules for achieving a given design um, for uh, it looks like an aesthetic task something like looks nice okay the design word reminds us of that but basically the our goal is not to make something beautiful that is not the main our main uh, goal uh, but uh, it's something to be understandable and easy to navigate. Okay, you, we use uh, the visual aspects, the visual attributes of our interface uh, to make it easier to understand and to navigate. Mm -hmm. So what the, what's the goal of visual design? Is to guide the users <clears throat> in understanding the contents uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the application. So what is the structure? What are the sections of the, of the application? What are the functionalities? What are the importance? So how do different elements that we see on screen relate to each other? Okay, if I have a, a profile information, then I have a picture. Uh, the picture uh, is be, belongs to the profile. Uh, this is a, a conceptual linking, and we know uh, we, we must visually okay uh, represent that specific link in the same way. So visually, we should see that. Uh, um, there is a link between two different concepts and one is one concept is a child of another okay so this should be <clears throat> explained visually by our interface and all the other all the other types of relationship that we have and <clears throat> and uh, should should also give the, the the pace for for interaction so uh, you have uh, a good visual design so that people can go to your website then find it useful they, they start using it, uh, they find uh, easy to orient uh, in the different functions uh, and uh, they know where to go easily because all of this will be communicated by, by the visuals of the website, by the layout, by the colors, by the sizes and so on, okay? And uh, we'll also have some hints uh, how to uh, go deeper into the content. So there will be at least two levels of reading or, or viewing uh, um, an application. The uh, first level is uh, the first impact uh, where you see and you immediately understand what is happening. What's uh, this website for? What are the different sections of the page for? Uh, how the different elements relate to each other? And so we have an, an, an immediate welcome, let's say, uh, uh, and that the visual aspect will give you. And second, when you go into more details, you will see that the visual aspect will give you a lot of the little hints and, and suggestions how to go deeper, how to access other functions that were not visible uh, immediately. Okay, this will link very nicely with the, with the heuristics that we'll see uh, next week uh, um, for, for evaluating the designs. And also, uh, a, a given visual design gives us a, a message, okay? Whether you have a very serious design, or a very you know, fancy design or a very um, uh, fun-like uh, aspect of the website will also tell you something uh, like you know, where, how, how you're dressing will tell you something about your mood, how you want to pose towards the others and so on. And so uh, this is also an aspect uh, um, that will frame the people's mind into what uh, uh, the application is doing, okay? Uh, this is more uh, of a communication slash marketing aspect rather than a usability aspect, but they are um, they are both important. And we are going we are, we are working both at the conscious level. So we write sentences that have a given meaning. We write labels uh, that uh, we hope uh, the user will give the right interpretation to those. And also a lot of the subconscious level. We see a lot of examples where we make links and connections between items or between elements 
on the subconscious level. So something that happens bef even before we realize what you are looking for, our brain has, has already made some decisions, made some interpretations over what we are looking at, okay? And of course, uh, aesthetics uh, is, is also important, but it's not the goal here, okay? So basically, uh, we, don't, we are not requiring uh, everybody to be an artist uh, here. So visual design is not an artistic skill. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the first one who's very totally bad at arts. And um, so I would never uh, be, <laughs> I would never dare speaking about this uh, if it was about arts. It's about uh, um, um, practical issues uh, in design, okay? Uh, if you have artistic skills, it, of course, it will be easier because your eyes, your mind will be more accustomed to a good distribution of spaces, of, of colors, and so on, okay? But uh, uh, arts usually uh, aim at uh, being beautiful, not necessarily at being practical. Uh, and we, we do. Uh, we want, actually, to uh, make lives easier, not just something that is nice to look at, but something that is easy to use, huh? which is something more. Um, and we should acknowledge that real design skills are a career by themselves, okay? So we cannot hope in, in one week of work to become good designers. Like you cannot hope in one week of programming to become a good programmer, of course, okay? So we just try to, to master the fundamentals and try to apply them and especially train our eyes <laughs> to recognize good design elements or to recognize bad design elements uh, and use this recognition from other websites or from other application, use the recognition to copy, <laughs> to copy a, a design into our uh, products uh, so that we can say, uh, recognize the good parts and uh, make our applications uh, say, exploiting that, uh, that part. Okay, so why a real designer takes a life to become, uh, we can also, so in some way, we can apply some rules, some standards, some heuristics, and apply them to, to obtain, let's say, a good enough result, a good enough product. So uh, the basic of visual design. Okay, this uh, text is trying to explain the basic uh, points about visual design. And um, at first impact, uh, this is not very friendly, okay? It's, um, it takes uh, effort to read this text. Uh, if you are just glancing this slide, uh, it's uh, either you concentrate on reading the text uh, or you just listen to me, but you cannot do both because now it requires some effort. It's not well structured. It's a text uh, that is all, with the same spacing, the same fonts, uh, um, all all together. Okay, it's a wall text, wall of text uh, that it doesn't help you with understanding. But actually, we we just restructured that, but uh, uh, by adding a very important element that is the most important element of design. The most important element of design is uh, space, empty space. Okay, it's not fonts, it's not colors, it's not uh, lines, it's not icons, it's space. Space, it was, it's mainly what gives uh, the meaning to the different elements, what gives grouping, what gives uh, um, uh, separation, and so on. Uh, so it, just by putting some new lines here and there, not randomly, but when the topic is changing, we, are, uh, we, we, we made a step forward, okay? This design looks better because even if you squint your eyes, uh, you can see that there are four points into this text. In the previous version, you don't know how many concepts, how many items you have to, to, to read or to understand. Here, you, you see that there are four. Then you can start to understand which ones uh, are they and how they relate. Hmm? But at least uh, at first sight, you just by adding some space, you have itemized the content. And the user already knows that there are four elements to consider. So the first element is space. Um, the second element is size. So above the text, uh, the text is uh, uh, formatted by using white space to separate the content. And then we have the font size and style differences that convey hierarchy. 
and we are showing it here. So text is clearly a title, a subheading for this content here. We don't need to explain it. It's just uh, evident. You, you, you see it that uh, this be, this larger side size here is in some way boxing this content and saying, okay, I am larger, I'm above you, so I own you. You're mine. You're under my control. Okay. And this sentence here it doesn't have a title, so it's a general heading for the page. And this should uh, be other titles like the, the like the first one. They are in the same font, in the same size, the same color, so they have they will have the same role. So number one is white space. Uh, number two is uh, style, the style of the text. Style meaning font, face, bold face, or italics, and and um, and size, of course. And also alignment will help. We see in the next slide that we are adding some control. So we are changing the font here, so it becomes. Uh, we, we thought that it was already a heading, this one, but now it's uh, more clearly indicated because we have uh, trans uh, transformed that in all caps. And here we had just had some, some alignment uh, to reinforce the idea that uh, all of this is under the heading of text. So we are just playing with uh, you know, short or uh, small hints, small elements uh, that, uh, by the way, if you read it, uh, the words here, if you read this text word by word, is exactly the same as here. This, the words are the same. The readability is totally different. Hmm? And so what we did with text, uh, we can also do with layout uh, and with colors. Of course, when you go to layout, uh, we have more than text elements. We will have also graphical elements. We, can have, we will also have uh, uh, interactive elements uh, and so on. So what we are trying to learn is a, is a language for creating interfaces using these elements of style, spacing, color, text, and so on, and, and especially layout. Layout is very important and will be the, the, the item from which we are devoting more, more time and more in-depth explanation in, the, in, this, uh, in this week. Uh, just for telling the user, uh, what we are talking about, what is the structure of our sentence, okay? In the first version, we have this, the first, let's start with text, and the text is about white space, is about uh, size and style, is about uh, alignment and so on, but it was all together. Here is more explicit that these one, two, three sub properties are properties of text. And when we add four chunks here of information, one, two, three, four, five, four, uh, we made the first one as a title. So actually we don't have really four, we have a title and three items. This, we can, if I started from this, all of this from, from this slide, all this information would have been self-evident. We don't need to explain that. Okay, your mind and your eyes is processing them even before you start reading the first word in the page. And uh, we are applying that uh, at all levels, okay? Uh, many websites, when many applications should have usually a recognizable structure. So I, I blurred this page on purpose. I took a, a, a snapshot and then I blurred the image uh, so that we cannot read the text, okay? We cannot read what is in, on this page, but uh, uh, we can recognize that this page has a sort of uh, some top content here and there. I cannot read, but I probably I could guess that here we have some search uh, function maybe. There is some headings uh, section here probably, and there are some blocks. I could draw them like th like this. This is, oh, sorry. This is one block. Then we have another here, another there. This should be probably articles because I have a picture and I have some text below. 
and here we have other blocks that are you know in this uh, in this rightmost column and so on so we can understand the logical structure of a page without even reading it because in this version we are not reading of course we, if we read it uh, we will have confirmation we'll have more details because uh, if this is an article then we have an image we have a title and we have the author of the article so we can read more and we can make up out of this is is the author okay uh, in this case we don't have an author here i don't know why it stands out because it's different remember the the consistency rules uh, if something is different it will uh, it will attract your attention and so on uh, but we we were able to uh, to understand the structure of the page based on these very simple uh, ingredients okay that all together are so the, the 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 key points the cornerstones of, of visual design the layout positioning of elements in the page the text something is larger so it should be a title and uh, uh, the colors so for example these blocks here have, has, have a different background so logically i'm grouping these articles on the right in a different category than the other articles in a way i don't know which is the difference basically i, I would need to to read them or to understand them better but the difference in color is guiding me to se towards separating the page into sections vertically hmm? and and the same goes for you no know, the you know this page very well there's only one element in this page which is this input box so you don't need to read anything because there's nothing more to read well basically if you want uh, there's something in the top right corner we don't read it here, but we can guess what will be the profile probably information because every website has your profile information in the top right. And there's something at the bottom also. Okay. It doesn't attract your our attention at first because our attention is totally focused on this box. And why? Why is our attention so strongly brought to this box? Because of the white space here and there and on, on all sides so all the white space is giving strength to the central element of the page it's something that is so important that it pushed everything else away and we need to think about it for a moment uh, in order to see the other elements in the page uh, in the corner or in the bottom in, or in the footer okay so a page which is nearly totally white gives us a, a lot of strength to this search box which is uh, how google is making billions and billions of dollars okay? just this text box that's why it's so important and the branding so the second element is called, of course the branding and they say we can do this this game this exercise for many other websites uh, what's this is probably something similar to stack overflow and where we have a list of items uh, there are items uh, you see our eyes are automatically breaking the page in a heading zone and the three sorry for the three sections three vertical sections and the central one is the most important one why is it the most important one because it's at the center and because it's, it's bigger than the others so layout and size always give the rules and on the right hand side we have blocks of information they have different colors they have different layouts so they have different meanings i I'm, i don't know the meaning until i can read the text but from the layout i only i already can infer a top-down structuring of the page and at the left hand side i have something that looks like a menu looks like a tree so items and sub items in a way which are nested so it should be probably some sort of navigation or or uh, let's say uh, uh, itemized list uh, of, of possibilities and then we have the big uh, content at the center that of course is made of a horizontal list uh, of elements uh, 
where we have colors that should have some meaning, uh, numbers and text that we cannot make out at this moment. If we go to the, the real web page, we can see whether we guess correctly or not uh, the role of the different parts of the page. Uh, by the way, we are sure, for example, that this box here, we didn't focus our attention there before, it's part, uh, these filters, let's say, will only apply to the center of the page. They don't apply to you know, the right hand side blocks or they don't apply to the left hand side because there are positions there. They will apply only to that part of the page with falls under their say um, their, their presence, their control in a way. So we don't need to explain anything, okay? The position, the size of the element, the relative positions already is telling which element is affecting what, okay? Uh, this part on the left, uh, this left menu is probably affecting everything else in the right, in the, we read from left to right. So first we select something on the right, on the left, then all the center column is uh, in some way affected by, by what we are doing in the left. And uh, while the right hand uh, size, it may be something deeper or something independent. Hmm? And we can, we can repeat the game on other websites. Uh, uh, just try to think about how you would divide logically the page which blocks are influenced by who, by, by which others, and so on. Okay, so for example, here we have something that looks like a profile, and it's uh, separated. Is look at the colors. In the previous case, uh, this was uh, there was this thin vertical line here, that is starting here, and continued all the way down. So this was telling that these two blocks, this one and this one are in a way connected. In this case, we have something that which, which is floating on the back, over the background. So it's something that is just being put there and is not directly influencing or connecting to the central part of the page here. And while these boxes here are above everything else, so they will affect all the content of the page. This is what the visual design is telling us. This was TripAdvisor, by the way. And uh, uh, the nice part is that we can play this game also to websites that are in a language or in a script that we totally don't understand. So probably, I don't know if there are any Chinese here, they can read this content, but uh, just pick any script or any language that you totally don't understand, open a website, and you are able to more or less understand the functionality, the role of the different parts of the page. Based on this very simple criteria, size, positioning, spacing, fonts and colors, and so on. Okay, so we are very accustomed to this. Actually, uh, we are not uh, um, starting from zero, from scratch every time you open a web page, because uh, we assume that most web pages, most websites uh, are designed with more or less consistent rules. Okay, we have a header for every website, uh, we have uh, uh, maybe some menu here on the, on the left-hand side, uh, so local navigation that helps us to move across the different sections. Navigation will be uh, on the left-hand side or on the top uh, row of the, of the content. Uh, we have some hints, uh, for example, there's uh, uh, this uh, item here as a different color and it's telling me where I am at the moment the search button, the, the login and logout and search functions are always here. The logo of the website is always there and so on, okay? And there, there's also some basic uh, information at the bottom of every page that is about the whole site, website, and it's probably will not change when we move from page to page and so on. There's a lot of conventions that we find in all the websites that we are visiting. So when we, are, when we are going to a new page, we are already expecting some sort of structure, okay? And so we are trying, it will help us to recognize the structure of a new page because we already, we already saw so many of them, so many of similar ones, 
okay they are using the same criteria so every every website has a different functionality different structures a different or and different contents but the rules are the same like when you buy and open a book you expect the titles to be written in boldface at the top of the page the title will not be written the title of a chapter huh? will not be written sideways in the border for example in the margin they will be centered or very uh, say large in the in and the in the upper part of the page of, of your book and that is what is telling you that this is a cha the chapter name you don't need to to see the word chapter you just recognize it from the space in the fonts and all the typographical conventions and the way we are intuitively getting all this information is because our brain is working uh, on a continuous classification of the information that we are receiving that we are seeing i'm talking basically especially about uh, the site uh, but also it is also will apply also to hearing all to other to all to other to all other senses that we have and uh, uh, the um, uh, researchers in the psychology field uh, uh, try to classify the rules by which our brain is working about with some perception print principles principles of perception uh, they were called uh, they were using the usually the, the german word which is gestalt okay so there are something that uh, dates a uh, hundred years back in the 1920s and they were trying to um, understand how our eyes and our brains are processing the old objects and information that we see and where we see patterns and when we see disconnected elements so where what are the conditions by which our uh, brain is seeing some connections and what are the conditions by which our brain is that doesn't see any connection it just perceives uh, separate elements uh, from each other and so we learned how they work how the mind is working and therefore we learned how to trick the mind into uh, steering our mind into the right direction okay so there are some several principles uh, uh yeah we are, i'm summarizing some of them the most important one the, the ones that are most uh, frequently mentioned like uh, 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 something that will help us uh, uh, separate the foreground from the background for example okay for us uh, the the foreground is something which is stronger more stable the background is more fuzzy or or um, it's, it's less defined uh, our eyes uh, prefer closed shapes so if we see something which is open uh, we try uh, immediately to complete the shape with our eyes uh, for example uh, even if uh, the, the, i will see i will show some examples later on so we are seeing some closed shapes when actually they are not uh, we are grouping elements so we we think the different elements are related if they are together in the same region they share the same ground or they share the share they share the same container they should be related if different elements are in the center column they should be of the same type if they are on the right column they should be of the same type if elements are connected they touch each other they are close to each other they should be connected so how that's how we associate the title with the picture of the article the picture is connected to the title because they are close together hmm? um, and the article follow one after the other uh, we also have a good uh, association with with shapes hmm? so if elements have the same shape they, sh they should be related so all stars should be in some way connected and 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 uh, and so on okay uh, others uh, other important ones are uh, the regularity huh? okay something that is uh, follows a pattern and then if you break the pattern and something changes uh, you even the, if the spacing is the same you see a disconnection and you imagine two different groups instead of one hmm? and the same goes for symmetry uh, and uh, uh, which is another principle okay about uh, uh, having something symmetrical like in these slides we have two lists one on the left and one on the right and we are saying okay they are connected they are related to each other because they they appear 
say in a, uh, say symmetrical to each other. So let's say, let's see some some examples. Okay, okay. This one the uh, top right we we, call, we recognize it is the famous optical illusion, where depending on how you uh, how you see that uh, you will uh, you will perceive uh, uh, two faces of people uh, looking at each other or uh, just a vase uh, uh, in the in the middle okay uh, and there's no right answer it's just the brain is not decided which one is the foreground and which one is the background because there's a good balance of uh, and uh, this, uh, this other example here, we actually, we have the, the white shape, which is, looks like an apple, but we have also the, 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 um, the black face here. And we, we don't know whether the black is the background of the apple or whether the, uh, uh, the white is the background for the face. Uh, it's you know it's a, it's a game we are playing just for optical illusions, uh, but uh, we are applying them everywhere in the design. Hmm. So, for example, here we have an, an element which is, of course, on top of another, and this other is on top of the background. So we have a hierarchy of elements which are one above the other. I am below, you are above it, and the other one is still more. Uh, on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on the third level. So we are using them to, uh, to give hierarchy to the objects. Also here, for example, we have a background. This is clearly a background. And these are clearly elements on the background. This is another element on the same background, which, which by itself creates a new background where there is a new foreground elements on top of that. So that will give us the way, if you imagine that in, in three dimensions, of separating different layers. And different layers will have different meanings. One is the background of the page, one is the container of the menu, and one are, is the, uh, the item of the menu. Because one, each one of them is uh, on top of another. Is the figure, is the foreground of, with respect to another background. Um, and that's why also we don't care too much about this image here we have in the background because we already classified it as a background. Is it the earth, is the moon? We don't care. Since we have some text which is written on top of that, immediately we classify this image, you are just a background. Uh, okay, so, so you have just an aesthetical purpose. Uh, what do you see in the top right figures here, for example? So in the, in the, let's start from the right hand uh, picture, this one. How would you describe it? I would say that there are several columns of squares. I don't think anybody will describe it as having a rows of, of, of squares, right? So we are instinctively grouping the squares in columns instead of rows. Why? Because all of the elements in the same row have some common attribute. They have all the same color. By the way, some are colored and some are gray. And the others are gray. So in a way, these the gray ones uh, more or less tend to have the role of a sort of a background on which the colored column will appear. So it's a way of just, uh, why, why is the gray considered as the background? Not because it's gray, hmm? but because it's, uh, it's uh, continuous, it, it's constant. And the others are varying. So they give you more information, they give you more variability. So something which is similar, the gray, which is similar everywhere, uh, has less importance because it's everywhere than something which is special and a group of elements that share the same special attribute. That's the rule why we grouped the, where we considered, oops, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't use this, uh, this object here in the same way. Uh, why we grouped these uh, articles here on the right uh, we consider them to be different from the others because they are similar, 
among themselves and they are different from the others that so follow different rules also these ones here in a way are different in shape because we have picture and text and the others are different in shape because we have picture and title so this is a sort of important uh, news this is a sort of important news this is a sort of less important news because it's different so it should have a different uh, uh, importance and it's smaller so, so it should be less important and this will be something else uh, as because they are different from all the news that we have on the left hand side okay the same is here for, for this picture we see a sort of a square made of uh, of circles inside the background made of uh, triangles. Okay, so the uh, circle circles should be in some way. Our brains our brain is telling us they are in some way connected. Okay, very simply, these three elements are similar to each other and they are different from this one. So these three should share some functionality. Which is different from this one. Even if we, even before we are, we are realized that some are uh, text boxes and some are buttons. And also this is green with white text uh, and should in some way be related to the green with white text up up there. By the way, on a closer inspection, sign up and sign up are the same words. So they are similar. So even if they have uh, uh different size and different positioning they share the same color they share they share more or less the same text so we know that they are, they should be related in some way so we are our brain automatically without us thinking uh, subconsciously is uh, attaching semantic uh, relationship similarity relationship just on the basis of visual attributes Again, let's start from the abstract example here on the top right. What are you seeing? I see three groups uh, of dots. These two dots, uh, these two, this group of uh, eight, uh, even if they are identical to these ones, uh, I tend to consider them together as group one and two. We are not considering black dots and red dots. The main division here is not black and red. It's a one, two, three, left, middle, right. So the spacing that we have here, the, the separation done by the spacing is stronger by the similarity given by the color. Okay, we could play with colors here because the spacing was all the same. And so the important grouping element was color here the spacing is a, is a stronger force and so our first level grouping is a spacing and for example this is why we you see that we have a spacing here which is sorry smaller than what we have there this is smaller this is larger so these two are closer than these two and this means that this label which will always be associated with the element on top just because of the space we don't need any lines any dividers just spacing okay and the same for these articles here uh, we have uh, some space here which is bigger than the space we have here and so this will automatically link uh, this picture and this text together we do that every time but if we think about this, we can exploit it in our designs, okay, to, to use it for our purposes. And if these basic hints are not enough, we can use some stronger or more explicit hints, like uh, uh, grouping, okay, creating regions, creating sharing backgrounds. Uh, so, for example, in the, in the left uh, um, picture, we have uh, uh, this Pinterest that Hosts pictures of all the of all sizes, and so they are very irregular in shapes and in the, in colors and in aspect ratios and so on. So for associating uh, the title with the with the image, uh, 
they decided to create a container. This container is made of round borders. Okay, one, two, three, and four round borders and a white background. The combination of these elements let you imagine of seeing cards in your page. So cards over a, a great background. And so inside the cards, you have different elements. You will never try to associate uh, never this text uh, with this image because it crosses a border. They cannot be together. Or this text uh, to that text. They cross a border here. They are in different cards, in different uh, uh, contained by different containers. Hmm? And this the same here, like it's this is Twitter on the right. Uh, we have the container of the of the conversation that contains a, a tweet and its comments. Okay, so we have two separate containers, the tweet and the comments with different backgrounds, and they are both contained into one big container, which is the conversation of the thread. Or 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 maybe it's Facebook. No, it's uh, it's more it's Facebook, it's Facebook, it's one old version of Facebook, basically. But we see we don't need a, a lot of space, we just need a, need a couple of pixels, a change of colors, even a slight change of colors, maybe some borders that gives us the, the illusion of a shape, the illusion of, of a container that will explicitly group some elements. Uh, on top of what the spacing and the other similarity attributes are doing. Hmm. Uh, we also are seeking, our brain is continually seeking for continu continuity, okay? So what you see here in the abstract picture that you have in the corner, I see an horizontal line, a straight line, and uh, another curve which is crossing it. I don't see, we tend to group the lines by continuation and which is stronger than the similarity of the color. Okay, we don't see a shape like this plus and a shape like that. Sorry for the, for the drawing. Hmm? They will not make sense. In our case, it's a line and a curve that crosses it. Hmm? So we're trying to continue the shape. So if we have a list of elements, one, two, three, four, five, our brain is expecting the list to continue, to have a, four, a six and seven and eight. So every hint about uh, uh, continuation is welcome. Okay, we already know what will happen here. The list will just go forward. Because uh, once we learn that we have one, two, three, four, five books, uh, it's easy to say that there will be a sixth and seventh and, 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 and more, okay? In the, in the same way, they should be have the same space in the same uh, positioning and so on. So it's just a continuation. It's a very simple principle. So we have elements in a, in a, in a, with a given constant alignment that will create a sequence. Okay, La, right now this sequence is explicit because we have one, two, and three, but we don't need those. Our brain is already creating the list in our mind. The closure principle, you see, uh, in here we are seeing a zebra animal, but if you look closer, the zebra is not drawn anyway. It's not closed. There is no contour of the zebra. We are just imagining a contour, but it's not there. It's just a set of stripes disconnected from each other. It's not a single animal, but our brain wants to see something closed. Okay, you see this in a lot of logos or images. Well, the log of I, the log of IBM reads IBM even if they are just disconnected lines. But we we our brain is completing the line, is closing them. Oh, sorry, it's closing them, hmm? and so on. We are we are seeing. A, 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 well, I don't know why it's doing that. We see a heart here in the middle, uh, but the heart is not drawn anywhere it's just the closure the, the closing shape from these uh, strange shapes shapes that are made uh, by the white leaves in some way mm -hmm. so this is, this principle doesn't have much uh, uh, let's say it's not used very much into website designs is more on the graphical designs and the logo and so on something like that and the other strong uh, 
element is that of discontinuity. So the so-called focal point is something is very, very different. The red square is red, it's square and it's rotated and it's a, it's at a shadow. So all the possible attributes make it different from the, the black uh, dot circle. Okay. So that will stand out immediately is the first point of attention. Then we see all the rest. But first of all, we are seeing the red square. We are seeing the red button. We are seeing the green button here because they are, they are unique in this page. It's the element that this page are trying to uh, pull our attraction to, to pull our attention to. These are the element uh, that we want to focus on, okay? Why? Because uh, our brain is uh, classifying them as different from every point of view, so see, they should be unique. Hmm? They're so different that they should be more important. Uh, if you are in our brain, if, if you see a lot of trees and then you see a, something that looks like the head of a tiger, well, you're sure that your head, uh, your brain will be will ignore will be ignoring all the trees and focus only on the tiger because that will be something that should you should worry about. Huh? This is, uh, you know, that our brain is the same that we have we had, we had uh, sixty thousand years ago when our daily problem was not being eaten. And so we are applying these principles every day in every and every little application in every little interface in every little dialog box, uh, where uh, you know uh, we have some, for example, where division on the left we have some categories and on the right we have the content, and if we have some nesting visual nesting of elements, uh, uh, they will give us uh, relationships. They will explain the relationship because this picture, and the text and this price will all be related to this book. And this text and this image and this price will all be related to this other book and so on. And all of this will be of the same category, computer books, because of this container. Of course, this is a very strong design. We will never design something which saw thick borders and strong colors, okay? But even if we are using more subtle colors, more um, thin uh, borders, uh, the effect is, is processed by our brain in, uh, in, in also in that case. So it will have an effect also in that case. It looks like intuitive, okay, but we are reverse engineering our intuition, our intuition to see how it works and to exploit it. Okay, this is the general principle. Of course, now we, uh, we should break it down into different uh, detailed, the more detailed categories. Uh, the first one, take probably two years just to explore is text. And text is really a very complex design element. Uh, text, uh, you know that we have different many fonts and the fonts have different faces, uh, uh, different uh, styles, different uh, weights, and maybe bold, maybe um, super bold, maybe italic, maybe slanted and so on. Uh, and every type of font is some, some way conveying a different style no, to, to your website. Of course, uh, you should never uh, use too many fonts because then they will become confusing, okay? But if you're using two or three fonts in a consistent way, you are giving a message that different parts of the page have different meaning or are related in some way because they are using the same fonts. And the, within a font, uh, you, are, you can play with the especially with the with the sizes so all the height of the font and all the distance between one line and the, and the next uh, to give uh, you know space is, the, is a very strong force uh, to uh, put together or pull away or push away different elements of the page uh, just an example uh, this is you know being an expert in fonts is very very difficult because they are really complex objects if you look at them and so we rely on type systems, in this case of uh, font system. For example, if you go to the material design website, uh, we, look, we saw the, the, um, the, the guideline uh, last week, they will tell you which fonts you should use in Android, for example, or in general on material uh, design interfaces. So you, if you want to create a website with material design, 
use these fonts. These are the ones that are being designed to work together with these sizes. So all the fonts, uh, in this case, uh, they use the same typeface uh, with different weights, a light, a regular, medium, uh, with different sizes and uh, a, whether it should capitalize them or not. So for example, we say that the buttons should have uh, the same size uh, of the, no, they should be smaller than so you, the normal size of the body of the main text uh, should be 16 points. But button should be smaller, but uh, all caps. So the text on the button should be all capitals. And uh, the, but the letters inside the button should have a larger spacing. So you have an extra distance here between this distance here is increased 1.5 times in a button. It's smaller, all capital with more spacing, like a, while the normal body is actually shorter. So the text is pushed together much closer or a bit closer than the default from uh, from typeface and so on. I'm oh, no, sorry, it's, it's more than, uh, so um, a bit uh, more space is 0.5. The default is zero for no extra spacing or negative for pushing letter together. So of course, uh, we cannot justify all these numbers. This number come, come, came from expert designers that balance a lot of factors and say, okay, if we use these rules, uh, then we have a consistent uh, appearance of the page. People will be able at, at the first glance uh, to recognize what is a title, which title is more important, where is the body, what's the subtitle, what's the button and so on. So you choose hmm, um, a style and you be consistent, you will be consistent with that style when you have, once you've chosen that. And we have to rely on expert people that design or decides the right combination of uh, fonts uh, styles uh, and uh, and um, and sizes for us okay uh, this is a, a, a comparison yeah, between the same content so these are two examples of the same uh, mobile uh, interface uh, with they contain exactly the same words but they are different in terms of uh, usage of the text Okay, uh, so what's the most important uh, information that you get on the left interface? I think the first one is this and the second is that or vice versa. I'm not sure which one looks stronger to me. Okay, and this is an application for paying your taxes or something like that. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, the, the the information that stands out more is this one. Do you confirm that you want to pay? Because actually I really don't need to be reminded so strongly of my name, nor I need to be reminded of the city where I live. I know that. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I need to do, know is uh, the action that I'm doing at this step. So what's the, the most important uh, role of this page okay we have the uh, the 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 list of the payment that you have to do and then we are asking for confirmation okay with this button so but we are not confirm i'm not confirming my name or i'm not confirming my my city i'm confirming the payment so the confirmation button should be clear when i click the confirmation button it should be clear what i'm confirming i'm confirming the payment and all the numbers that we have here are important but the real important one is just the total so the total you see that is a uh, is darker is larger than the other partial numbers everything is there we just adjusted the text sizes and in some cases some background color so for example this blue was too strong and was competing for attention with the button in the right hand side, just try to cover the left hand side with your hand. And you see that the only element that has a different color is the button, the confirmation button. So that is the action, the call to action of this page. This page is telling you, push this button. What does this button do? Confirm the payment of 20 euros. 
because they are the strong words uh, in this interface. Everything else is there if you want to. Um, of course, if you want to uh, to read them, of course, and if you want to check all the details, but uh, uh, the message is very clear. So just by playing with sizes and a bit of colors, okay? By the way, the total here is wrong because it should be 17 or two and not 20 or two. So they are uh, stealing you three euros without you noticing, but that's another topic. Um, and the same exercise I found in another example here, uh, the same description of house just by playing with fonts and location and so on, okay? Uh, on the left hand side, it's, it looks like very boring or very difficult no, to get or to read the information you need. Because for understanding what is this tree, I need to read the, the number of the left. And uh, so I need actually to read the labels in order to understand what's on the right hand side. Okay, It's all very well aligned, so it's not bad to look at, but uh, it doesn't tell me what is more important. On the right hand side, it will tell me the most important thing here. This is the budget. Okay, these are the contacts of who's selling the house. And this is the layout of the house, so the contents, which is very well separated. Then the, the, the actual address is also important, but it's less important than the rest, the address here. And uh, maybe the type of house and the age of the house, uh, of course. Uh, here is telling me 2012 and here tell me five years old which one is more important of course the five years old is more important because if they are telling me the, the year of, of construction i need to do the computations in my head to understand whether it's a recent construction an old construction or a very old construction for example hmm? so we just ask ourselves uh, what are the most important information that we want to give to our users and then we design the sizes and the spacings of the text as a consequence of that. Okay, and we are we are using the same space. You see, we are not using one pixel more. We are just readjusting the content. Um, so that uh, was about the fonts. But fonts, of course, uh, words are not isolated. They should be put somewhere in a page. And so what are the, the tricks that we may use uh, to organize the content of the page? There are many tricks and there are many layout styles, uh, but uh, the one which is really stronger than all the others uh, is the concept of grids and of alignments. On every design, we have some invisible lines that are guiding the position, that are constraining the position of our elements on the screen. And uh, uh, in a way, all the visual elements in should be attached on the left or on the right or on the top or on the bottom on the bottom or on more than one side to some of these invisible lines. This is what we are expecting, okay, in a way. So for example, I am opening a very complex uh, um, dialog box. This is the save uh, option, something like that, the options uh, of PowerPoint in this case. So you see that this dialog box is very complex. There are a lot of different uh, items, but uh, we see a lot of alignment there. So uh, in this case, uh, all the items in the left part of the window are all aligned the same line. None, none of them is shifted to the right. None of them is indented. This tells us that all these options are separate from each other. They are not interdependent. They are independent from each other and they will lead to different details on the right part of the of the of the form and also the right part of the form is you see a title here and this title is a, has a um, different color of a different background color and different font because this is bold compared to the text but it's also uh, aligned on a different line here you see that the text here and the title, this is aligned with this title, which is aligned with this title, and the text inside is aligned on an inner line. So this is telling us who is the title for whom. 
Uh, this is the, the title uh, contains uh, every element which is nested inside of it. And in this case, we have a, a second checkbox, which is further nested at the second level. So this checkbox only makes sense in the context of the previous checkbox. So just a bit of spacing is telling us all the, of this information. And you see that all the uh, path names are, or all the text inputs are aligned on the same vertical line. And also on the right hand side, they are aligned. Okay. Uh, actually, there are a couple of uh, inconsistencies. One is here. Why doesn't this continue to be aligned to the right? I don't know. And one is here. Why doesn't it start only at this point like the other ones? Because actually, it's again a file path. These uh, uh, contribute, these differences contribute to have the impression of a complex dialog window because we are trying to make some rules, some regularity, and there's, there are some elements that prevent us from confirming our rules. OK, every, every text input starts at the same place. Oh, no, there's one that doesn't. Uh, OK, all of them end at the right end of the window. Oh, no, there's one that doesn't. And so we, we, we cannot confirm totally our, the rules that we have in mind. And this gives us a little, uh, an impression of complexity and slows us down in the interpretation of the uh, of the interface and by the way we are not just uh, seeing the the result of the design of, a, of one person that tries to position the elements with their own taste or with their own uh, you know um, artistic uh, capabilities we we uh, we have very strict rules uh, that are uh, described by the creators of the design toolkits for example, you see that these are the, the, the guidelines of Visual Studio. When you are the UX guidelines in Visual Studio, they will tell you, OK, when you're creating an interface in Visual Studio, you should follow these rules. You should uh, nest the elements. So we have this alignment here and there. And they, all, they are also telling you the number of pixels for your spacings. This is 24, and this should be 12, and this should be 12, and so on. It's not minimum 12 or uh, maximum 12. It's exactly 12, OK? And if you have a group here, the margin is only 9, while the margin from the, from the border of or the margin of the window is 12. So this is 12 here. But if you are nesting some subgroups, uh, the margin will become only 9 pixels. And when you have the confirmation buttons, you have to leave 18 pixels uh, before uh, before we have the, the, the bottom of the page with the with all this. So we have all the, these details information. This is taken from the from the manual. Of course, in Visual Studio, you can put elements wherever you want. But the rules for having a, consist, a consistent user interface are spelled out very precisely there. And so that, that is what gives you the, a consistent look and feel of, of across all application. It's not automatic. It's just following rules that have been designed by somebody who knew much better than us the, the art of design. So we, we are not master in design, but we are following the rules of the masters. Okay? And this is a very, it's not something new. No? I found this information from a, a, a look and feel guidelines of the Java language back in 1999. So it's 21 years now. Uh, so it's nothing new. At that point, they were already, and we, we see that this interface looks old. The fonts are, are ugly. They're not very nice. And, the, and the, um, the look and feel of the buttons is outdated. Outdated, of course, because the, you know, the visual taste uh, is changing or changed over the, the last uh, 20 years. But the rules were already there. Of course, the number of pixels were different, but the Java design styles already had some very strong opinions uh, or rules about how you should lay out elements on the screen. And you see that most of these rules are uh, interpreted with a grid in mind. So you should align elements on the left. And if you have many, uh, many you know, uh, check boxes, you sh they sh all should start at the same line. And possibly they should end at the same line. All the buttons should also should be aligned and so on. So the alignment over different grid, grids, you see that 
the right margin should be consistent across all the windows. So the close button should be aligned with the end of the text box and the end of the options box, let's say. So all this alignment is very important. If we should follow that, um, follow those. Also in the in the design of web pages. Okay, so these are just dialog windows. But when you are when we are moving to the to the whole web page, the same principles apply. And uh, we have uh, uh, all these definitions are shown in the graphical in the next slides. Uh, if we start from the page, we first have uh, the page is a container in that some way has some margins. So the margins are the distance from the borders of the window to the actual content. So the margins are something outside our main background. And the space here is our design space that we can fill with different columns of content. So we may have many columns. Uh, and this is a column. And these columns are separated by some space. So the columns don't touch each other. They are separated by a space which mm, is called a gutter. So the gutters are these sort of separators. And in our design, if we have this grid, which is an invisible grid, of course, we can lay out the content by occupying one or more columns. Of course, these columns are very narrow. There are not enough for most of the content, but we can lay out the content by taking one column, three column. In this case, we have one block that takes four columns here and four columns there. Then we have two blank columns, two empty columns, and another block of four, for example. So in this case, we are playing with the layout of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 columns. So we divide our margin, not the whole page, because we leave out the margin. The content of the page is divided into 12 equally spaced columns with a margin between the gutter between each of the, uh, a couple of uh, consecutive columns. And we lay out our page by saying, by deciding how many columns element, an element is going to take. We are never thinking in pixels because we cannot decide whether it will be 21 or 24 pixels. It will be one or two or three columns, depending on the importance of the element. And so we decide the blocks in terms of columns, and also we align them in, in terms of horizontal lines. Okay, So we should have a horizontal alignment also here that we add at strategic points. Usually also here, we don't reason in pixel by pixel, but we have a a fixed increment, a fixed step uh, to which all the size uh, will be approximated. So it will be 12 pixels, will be, I don't know, 18 pixels or, or whatever. So that all the lines will fall on one grid line or the next grid line. And usually this grid line distance is also the, the spacing of the text or the main text of the, of the page. So we have a discrete size which is replicated. And so our mind can see, see the grid. All of this is not visible, of course, but uh, all the elements will be positioned on this invisible grid. This uh, is another design where we are uh, displaying elements of two col that take two columns each. And for example, we have an element that takes all the columns there. So what does tell us? What does this tell us? That the element that is telling that is using eight columns. Uh, is above the elements that are taking two columns. And so the first one is more important than the others. The first one will have effect on the others. The first one will own, will influence the others. And the other will be uh, smaller. And they will be the same, because they, are, they have the same space in the same size. They are in a sequence. So they are all of the same type. And they are all under the main one. So just by playing the occupation of the empty space, okay, we have an empty universe here. We want to fill it. Depending on the way we fill it, we are giving meaning to the content we are putting on the page. And even here, there are tools that will help us very easily you know, to create our layout using this criteria. Uh, you may be familiar with the Bootstrap uh, uh, library, 
that gives you a design uh, based on two columns in total. Okay, so the page is automatically divided in 12 columns, uh, and for every element, for every div that you put in your page, uh, you in your page, <coughs> you may decide how many columns it will take. You will never reason in pixels again. You will always reason in columns. Uh, and 12 is a good number because it uh, can be divided by six, by four, by two, by three. So you can you know, man, man, create many different layouts uh, with multiples and sub multiples of this number. You, you can divide it into uh, four and eight, which is one third and two thirds. Uh, you can divide it in three and nine, which is one fourth and three fourths. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very, it plays very nicely 12 with a lot of combinations. So you're reasoning in, in columns uh, and not in pixels anymore. And by the way, uh, the, 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 say the, the features of the Bootstrap library with the responsive layout features uh, uh, let you decide, depending on the size of the, of the viewport of the interface, uh, whether an element will be displayed in one column, in two or three or in four and so on. Uh, so you may have, a, I don't know, a left-hand menu here and the main content, and you may decide that this left hand menu should only use three columns and the, the rest will be used nine in large screens. But in small screens, they should be probably uh, 12 and 12. And so it means that uh, in small screens, you will have the menu and the top and the content at the bottom because both will be using uh, 12 columns. But this column will be narrower because we have a smaller device. On a large device, uh, the, the menu can only use 25% of the space, three columns, and the main content can be put at the sides using 75% uh, of the space. So just with this uh, question that you ask yourself, how many columns should I use for this element uh, depending on the, screen, uh, of the size of the viewport, uh, you are creating very easily a, uh, a vertical grid of alignment, uh, which is, will also adapt to the size of the element. Mm -hmm. So this is an example of the same website, the same identical code that always gives a, a vertical alignment to the elements, one, two, three different columns. But the number of columns is changing because every element is classified by occupying three columns on an extra large screen. And so 12 divided by three is four. We have four columns or four columns on a large screen. And so we have three items per row because each of them will be using one two three four columns we don't see the 12 columns we only imagine them or if the screen is a medium size uh, we each element will use six uh, columns and so only two of them will fit on the page because the 12 columns are divided in six here and six there we are thinking thinking in columns we're thinking in, uh, in rows we're thinking in grids and we'll, this will make our layout much easier to create and much, much easier to decode. When one sees this content, doesn't have any trouble in trying to understand the relationship between the different elements. And of course, uh, this one is, taking, is always taking the whole space. So it's the boss, okay? It's the main content that determines the title for everything else. Uh, Bootstrap is not the only design system. No, there are others, uh, for example, two famous ones are 960, which uh, works either on 12 or 16 columns. Uh, and uh, this other one is called Unsemantic. It's, mm, it's not very, very well known, but it's working basic, mainly based on percentages and not on, on a fixed number of, uh, uh, of columns. So you can decide uh, in percentage how to divide uh, the layout. But, all of these are responsive, so they can easily scale across the different screen sizes by adjusting automatically the grid. So we still have a grid-based layout in mind, but it's not longer a fixed grid based on pixel. It's a grid that is computed dynamically with the rules of our grid system, with the library that we are going to use. It will save us a lot of trouble if we try to follow the rule of one design system or, or another, we choose one and we follow these rules. Uh, we don't try to do everything by hand or, or decide it by hand. And so right now with this knowledge, uh, we can go back to the examples that we saw before. And we saw that actually we could recognize many of the elements because they were using a grid system. 
it's not so regular. The spacing here is not so regular. Actually, we have uh, one, two, two different rhythms in the page. One is the um, orange lines. You have the column, you have the gutter. You have the column, you have the gutter, which have a very, uh, say, wide rhythm. One, two, three. And we have a shorter rhythm, which are which is dictated by the green lines. One, two, three, four. Hmm? So in a way, we are dividing the space in different grid systems, different subgrids. Basically, uh, apart from the right column, this is one and two, and this is one, two, three uh, subcolumns. We're dividing the same space in different ways. So we have different grid systems that, in a way, overlap with, with each other. This one is not really, uh, you see that this space number one is shorter than the space number two. So it's not very regular because they wanted to give more space to the title rather than the image. So of course there are variations, but all the images that are wider will use the same one, two rhythm. And all the articles that are small, they will use all the same one, two, three rhythm. So we have a regular rhythm in the page that makes it easier to, to the code, and by, by the way, we are one row of a type and the other of the second type, one of the first type, and so on. And all the other websites are using the same system. So of course, they go a step farther than what we can do just basically with the 12 columns of Bootstrap. They need to be more precise on some elements, but at least they have a start, uh, um, a starting, uh, in this case, this division, which is one, two, one, two, and three. And then the main content two is again divided into smaller, smaller content, again with a strong alignment. And we say also here, you may be familiar uh, with the Polytechnical uh, page describing the course. Uh, in the, it's a very complex page. There's a lot of, of information here, but it's easy to decode. So in this case, it was very easy to understand what was happening here. Because all the all sorts of tricks were used. Okay, we have the alignment here, so in the columns period and, and all aligned here. The code, the the title of the courses are very clean aligned. The teachers are very clean aligned, and we have some details about the course, which are written in a in a in a font that has a, a um, lighter colors, and uh, and uh, while the title of the course was un underlined. So of course. This uh, label here refers to this course there. There's no confusion. Also, if you look when you have a sequence of courses, it's difficult to see, but this space here, here is smaller than this space below. It may be just a couple of pixels, but it's enough that our eyes will associate the code uh, to, the, to the name above and not to the name below. This is the current version of the same page. So they change it this year. The same content is now uh, laid out in a different way, um, which may be more modern because it's white background, uh, it's wide, uh, uh, it's wide, but and in this case, the grid is made uh, has been made visible, has been made explicit. Okay, so maybe better, maybe worse, maybe it's easier to read. Of course, it's more suitable for large screens. Because, for example, this content here the, the, the is it requires an extra column, while before it was just below the text. Okay, so in this case, uh, the space occupied more vertical space and less horizontal space, and in this case, we are occupying more horizontal space. But maybe the screens today are larger, so we can afford that in, in a way. Okay. Um, there's only one thing that I don't like about this design is how they use this uh, or uh, because they are in the middle of two different uh, uh, courses and they don't really uh, group them in a way. OK, we should see something more like uh, one of these two courses and then both of them in some way indented under the message or something like that. So this is difficult to uh, to see that this course is a, an option with this one. And this one, these two look uh, together, but actually this one, computer network technology should be grouped with that one below because they are in, a, in mutual, mutually exclusive. 
So this sort of grouping of couple of courses which are mutually exclusive is not very well visible here. And by the way, to be honest, it wasn't visible even here because uh, we had the same the same uh, or which was just separating the elements. So they are not visually describing which courses are a group uh, among which you have to choose one of them. But they have a strong alignment. In, some, in this case, the alignment is even visible, but it's what makes uh, the page uh, uh, easy to read, even if it's, if, if it's, if it's complex. Mm -hmm. And also the, the taste or the, the conventions for alignment uh, evolve over time. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, for example, I took the same page uh, from Amazon. And of course, uh, we should always try to uh, uh, copy from the good one, from the <laughs> company that invest a lot of money uh, in their designs. And we see that uh, uh, in 2015 and 2019, and I just checked also in 2020, uh, it's the same, nearly the same. There was there are little changes, and if you want, you just go to Amazon and try to 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 understand which are the changes and try to think about why they did that, why they did those. Okay, um, they are using two different styles. Uh, in 2015, they used a, a very strong alignment. So all the titles are aligned at the right and all the contents are aligned to the left. So two columns, column one with the right alignment with the labels, column two with left alignment with the text, with the content and the gutter in between, a small gutter in between. And was uh, a style that was quite used at that time, at the, in that period. And uh, right now, the design is currently shown the right. So the label of a text box is no longer on the left side, but uh, it's on the top. It's about just above it. Of course, it's with the right spacing and so on. So instead of having the label on the left, we have the label on the top of, 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 of every element. And all the elements are better aligned because they are they have all the same margins so we don't see this rugged border here which is uh, not very aesthetic and also we don't see the left uh, ragged border mm -hmm. we see all are uh, very clean but the the strongest uh, uh, change was that uh, they are um, let's say this is a b-dimensional form where Left and we have right, left and right, and uh, we go from top to bottom. Here we only go from top to bottom. We have no left and right information. I think that this new design was made uh, for being more compatible with mobile devices, where in mobile devices uh, we are used to have only vertical scrolling. No? Horizontal scrolling is very bad on mobile devices because the screen is so small. So we are used to see, uh, to read from top to bottom and have all the information grouped in this way and not left to right, because in left to right, you should have to scroll the viewport on, on the smartphone and it would be extremely bad. And so they try to come up with a design and with design convention. And we see that a lot of forms today are using this sort of convention. The label just above the, 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 the text the input uh, sm with a much smaller font, but it's very closely associated with that. So uh, it, it takes less space. It doesn't require horizontal scrolling and it's clean anyway, because they have a good alignment and a good spacing. So even the same form, again, we see that the information is the same, more or less, 99% is the same, but the layout is different. The right one is cleaner, is more, looks more modern, and is also more compatible with the uh, let's say new type of devices uh, that are, uh, and also you see also the final bot buttons here uh, are just below only one of confirmation. We don't have the, uh, we do have many more complexity in this button. So we try also to simplify the actions of the user. So every year, every month, every company, the big company is trying to come up with the, better details, uh, better design. We see, if we see the one in 2020, you see that they are changed the label for this one, for this, this single field, which is something which is really uh, seldom used, but maybe they detected that the, they, the users made some mistakes and they wanted to clarify it because it's the only one without any label, you see. 
is the only one who doesn't have any label. And so maybe the, that creates some confusion and they push them to, to modify this kind of layout. A lot of details we, sh we should need to care. And really what I hope that we can train our eyes in recognizing uh, uh, good forms and bad forms and good layouts and bad layouts, the alignments of the elements and so on. Now that we know the tricks, uh, it's not only our in subconscious brain, which is processing them for helping us making out the information, but also our conscious brain. No? We try to see what the designers did. Okay. Okay. I see that this is nice, but I also can tell you why, hmm? because I see the trick that the designer were using in that specific interface. Hmm? So uh, basically uh, start uh, from the size uh, that you want to, to fill in the page, uh, uh, try to have good alignment, especially left alignment, is, uh, left aligned text is easier to read. Uh, and, uh, um, and so that you can guide the eye in, in uh, reading and perceiving all the content in the page uh, very quickly without any effort. Uh, so that when the user starts thinking about what they saw, their brain already processed more uh most of the page and remember that any deviation any consistency and any deviations are automatically classified and so the brain is telling you these are close together these are similar they think of them as a, as a single group and this is different so think of that as something different so you can you can exploit this automatic classification for giving different meanings to the different parts of the page Okay, so this was the first part of this uh, uh, say, um, journey into the visual design. And so it's 9.05, so I'm a bit late as usual. I'm sorry again about that. And we can uh, meet together tomorrow again to continue this, uh, this analysis and maybe also try, try to see some, some examples uh, taken from your Hall of Fame in which we can try to recognize uh, a good design of a page that you are, that you have classified as a good uh, design page. Okay, so I will close it uh, now. So thanks for listening up to now, and we meet again tomorrow morning, same place, same hour. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>